So it's gonna come back on you back to throw. I'm gonna X out, so I'm not pulling no lag. I don't see no OBS. I don't see nothing. All I see is Facebook up here. Okay. Hello, everybody. I think I'm back. I don't know what happened, but I'm having some technical difficulties as we go through this every week. But um, I hope that you all will come back. I don't know if you're coming back or not, but It is. Y'all, I hope y'all are back with me. Uh, I hope y'all will come on back. I don't know what happened. We was having some uh, technical difficulties and it cut off. And we had to go all the way back in. So I hope that y'all are here with me. Uh, certainly on tonight. Uh, that was a little discouraging. And so I guess I've lost almost half of my people, but those who are on are on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Can you do me a favor? And because um, a lot of you don't do it when I ask you, can you just hit share if you don't mind, please? Can you just hit share? That would be a, that would be a help. If you can just hit share. You can just hit share tonight. So we prayed and we just really want to start off with um, with our scripture on tonight. I had my whole thing mapped out. It's already 721, so I just feel out of sorts. But we're going to go on with what we have certainly on tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Hit, hit the share and come on back. We've already prayed in. So I'm just going to give you what I have. Amen. We done lost almost this... Uh, most of the folk have gone. So let's go with what we have. So one of the things that I uh, want to do, I, I've been doing this and um, I want to go here. Black Theologian of the Week, I had Dr. Jeremiah Wright. Dr. Jeremiah Wright is the pastor and emergence of the Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago. Congregation he led for 36 years, during which his membership grew to over 8,000 parishioners. In recent years, many know him as the pastor of President Obama. But he is so much more than that. He is a scholar, activist, professor, author, and so much more. Furthermore, he is the founder, one of the founders of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Social Justice Conference. And Dr. Wright has published uh, four books of sermons widely used for seminarians. In addition uh, to his four books of sermons, he is a written as a history, has written a history of the Trinity United Church of Christ, a Sankofa moment. And there is so much more that we don't have time to talk about on tonight, but he is our theologian for the week, and we are grateful because we know him. Amen. We uh, we know him. Amen. And so our text for tonight comes from Jonah 2. Amen. So I'm just going to jump right on in. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. The roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath me barred me from barred me in, barred me in forever. But you, Lord, my God, brought me up, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. <laughs> I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah 
onto dry land. That's that is our that is our lesson for tonight. That is our lesson for for tonight. Uh, coming here from from Jonah. Amen. Coming here from Jonah. And so tonight I want to talk about rebellion. With rebellion, here's what I want to talk to you about. With rebellion always comes consequence. Come on, with rebellion always comes consequence. That's what I want to deal with on tonight. Because we want to deal with certainly the rebellion uh, that Jonah has. Because rebellion, anytime there is a sense of rebellion, you need to understand and you need to know there are always consequences uh, certainly that come along with that. And so tonight, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with rebellion because we know tonight uh, that rebellion can stunt your growth. Whenever we are uh, re uh, rebelling uh, against the will and the way of God and the direction of God that God has uh, given unto us, we know in that moment, child of God, uh, uh, that you have to always deal with the consequences of your rebellion. And that goes with any, that goes in any situation that goes with us spiritually. Uh, we remember oftentimes, even with our parents, uh, when your parents told you to do one thing and you didn't do it, you had to do what? You had to deal with the consequences, child of God, uh, certainly of your actions. And so as we look here at the book of as we look here at the book of, of Jonah on tonight, here's what we understand, that the book of Jonah shows us important principles, if you would, about the sovereignty of our God. What happens when God wants a person to do something, but the person does not want to do it? Mm. Jonah shows us that God has a way of bringing us to the place where we want, uh, to the place where uh, God really wants us to be. And so that's what this whole thing is about. He, he brings us to the place where we want and, and what God wants, to that place that, that we end up wanting, that's what I'm trying to say, I'm tongue-tied, that we end up wanting what God wants for us, if you would. And that's really uh, what the book of Jonah talks about. Let's talk about his location, if you would, uh, because the last chapter, we ended what? with there's a big fish to swallow him up. Uh, let us remember now that when we meet this prophet on today, let us remember that he's now, the prophet has been swallowed up in the belly of a big fish. This is in chapter two. Y'all have it? Uh, he is there. Why is he there? He is there because now he's dealing with, when we meet him today, he is dealing with, if you would, the consequence of his own action. And so when we meet this, uh, it is in a, he's in a strange place. Uh, he is now inside of the belly, not just of any fish, but get this, y'all. Uh, he's in the belly of a fish that God has prepared. We ended up with that last time that God has prepared just for him. And so now when we meet him in chapter two for the entirety of chapter two till you get to the last verse, you must understand that everything that is taking place now with Jonah and in Jonah's life in this moment, now it is coming now from the belly of the fish. Jonah now is in an awkward place. He's in a place that nobody has ever been, in a fish that nobody has ever seen, and he's having a moment with God that he has never had before. He is rebelling. He is being a rebellious, rebellious prophet. He knows what God wants him to do. He knows where God wants him to go, but guess what? He does not want to go. Uh, and here it is. What is rebellion? So when we begin to start talking about rebellion, uh, then you've got to understand what is uh, what is this thing we're talking about when it says rebellion? What is uh, uh, what is rebellion? Uh, rebellion is the act or the process, if you would, uh, of resisting authority, control, or convention. My God, uh, here it is. What is rebellion? Uh, rebellion is the act of of an act or process of resisting authority, control, or convention. Now, that's what rebellion is. When you go against, come on, when you go against 
authority, when you go against a level of control, and when you go against really convention. Uh, that's what uh, that's what rebellion is. Uh, and can I dare tell you, uh, there can be good rebellion and uh, uh, and there can be bad rebellion. Uh, when you look at Jonah, that's bad rebellion because he is going against the power and authority of Almighty God. But what we have seen in the last few weeks, uh, uh, that's what civil disobedience is, isn't it? It's rebellion against a system of oppression, but that's not what we're dealing with tonight. But what I want to share with you uh, is that we've seen all for the last, what, two weeks now, we've seen rebellion, we've seen pushback, we've seen uh, going against power and authority and what we have seen as convention. Come on, y'all. Uh, and so that's what we've been looking at over the past two weeks. Uh, but when you start talking about you know God, you're saved by God, you've been washed in the blood, you're on assignment by God, uh, you become in a danger dangerous place, child of God, uh, when you start going against what God has told you to do, okay? And so let me see if I can ask you some questions tonight, so just to get our minds going. Uh, in what ways, come on, you got to think about yourself. Uh, in what ways have you rebelled? Come on, come on. And now listen, uh, those of you all who are writing in the chat box, you might not want to put all of your information there, all right? Uh, but what ways have you rebelled? Uh, and how does it make you feel? How, how does, in your moments of rebellion, uh, how, what does it do to you? What, how, how does it make you feel? Do me a favor. Can y'all just go on and hit share right now? Come on, just hit share. I think we lost some of our people earlier. Just go on and hit share. I'm going to keep on going. Uh, but in the moments of rebellion, uh, uh, why did you rebel? Why, what, what, what was it going on with you? What made you uh what made you rebel? Uh, and what are the consequences? What are the consequences uh, that you had to deal with uh, because you rebel? And here it is. Uh, most importantly, in your moment and in your season of rebellion, and now that you're beyond that, uh, what did you learn? What did you learn? Listen, as a believer, as a believer of the Lord, uh, what did you learn uh, in your time of rebellion? Because guess what? Because although you've got to deal with the consequence of rebellion, uh, there ought to be a lesson that you learn uh, in the process. So now in the process of your rebellion, when you begin to look back, uh, you've got to ask yourself, first of all, what made me do it? Uh, here now, Jonah is rebelling, rebelling uh, because he wants to go. He want, he just did not want to do what God wanted him to do. Uh, and here's what I try to share with folk all the time. Be very careful what you ask for. Everybody uh, wants to be in the limelight. And there's a whole lot of folk here want to be pastors and want to uh, be ministers and want to be called. But you must understand that with your calling, uh, there comes moments, child of God, uh, that you've got to do things that you don't want to do. Come on, y'all. Uh, and has God ever placed something on your heart on your mind, in your spirit uh, to do something that you did not want to do? Uh, because here's what I've learned about God, that God can give you some strange directives uh, at some most inconvenient times. Come on, I wish I had somebody here tonight. Uh, come on, God will give you some strange orders, uh, things that you don't want to do. And then he's saying, uh, if you are who you say you are, and if you have said yes to my will, and if you have said yes to my way, uh, he says, hey, 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 God will say in your places you don't want to go. Uh, and God will make you deal with folk you don't want to deal with. Uh, and God will make you say things that you don't want to say. Uh, but if you said yes to his will, uh, and if he says yes to his way, uh, then guess what? Uh, you cannot run from the assignment. Come on here, somebody, uh, that God has placed on your life. Uh, and there comes moments, God, uh, child of God, where you're not comfortable. Come on, y'all. Uh, where you're not comfortable. Come on here. Uh, doing what God has called you and requested you to do. That's what Jonah's problem. Uh, Jonah didn't want to go. Uh, he was uncomfortable going. Uh, he didn't want to go and preach against their sinfulness. Uh, and he thought it was easier to run from God. How do you run from a God uh, that has surveillance on the whole wide world? Uh, though he makes the world with his hand. You can't run from God. Uh, and so here now he's rebelling. Uh, but in the midst of his rebellion, uh, there comes a moment, child of God, that you've got to learn some lessons. Come on, uh, in the process. Uh, and here's what I come to share with you. Uh, 
the, the, the most dangerous place in the whole wide world to be uh, is in a place where you decide to rebel against your God. Uh, because once you come to the knowledge uh, and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the worst thing you want to do uh, is to rebel on what God is telling you to do. Amen. Uh, you, the worst thing you can do uh, is to rebel on what God is telling you to do. And so that's why even in your lives, how many times uh, have we rebelled against our parents? Uh, uh, growing up, uh, but now you begin to learn, even even me, uh, uh, as I raise my children, uh, I see some things now uh, where I rebelled against my uh, learning from my mother and my grandmother, but guess what? Now all of those things come to pass. And guess what you begin to learn? You begin to learn that there is a lesson behind everything. And so you have to be very, you have to be very careful. And so when we begin to look at our text for tonight, when you begin to look, uh, he is in the belly of the well. He's in a situation. Come on, y'all. And here's what I want y'all to, here's what I want you to learn tonight. Sometimes um, the situations we find ourselves in, it's our fault. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody? here tonight that can testify, be honest about some things tonight. I see y'all. Uh, is there anybody that can be honest about some things tonight that we are, sometimes we are swallowed up in stuff and it's our fault. Come on in here. Y'all, can y'all talk to me? Hit like. Come on. I need to know that y'all, that y'all are with me. Come on. There are moments, child of God, uh, that we find ourselves swallowed up by the fish of life. Why? Uh, because it's our fault. Uh, the most of the time, the situations that we're in, uh, we created it and caused it on ourselves. Come on, somebody. Uh, and that's where we find Jonah tonight. He's in a situation uh, that what? That he caused on himself. Uh, why? Because he wanted to be disobedient to a God that's omnipresent. How crazy can you be? Uh, you serve an omnipresent God and you think you can run. Come on. Uh, this ain't no uh, grade school hide and seek. Uh, you serve a, an awesome God who sees everything, who knows everything uh, and knows the assignment that God has placed on your life. Uh, and so he, now he's running from God. Uh, and when we meet him, uh, he's starting to change his tune now from the belly, uh, from the belly of the fish. So there's some lesson there. There's a lesson here. See, here it is. So Jonah now, come on, let's give you some context. Uh, is in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Uh, though Jonah was rebellious, though he was resistant and a believer, here's what I like. God was not finished with him yet. Come on, somebody. I wish I had some help in here. Listen, uh, that although he was a believer, although he was resistant, uh, I'm grateful to know uh, that God was not through with him yet. Uh, and is there anybody that's on this chat on tonight, that's on this uh, on this live tonight that can say in your moments uh, when you did not do what God wanted you to do, uh, how many of you tonight can testify? I'm grateful that in my resistance uh, that God was not resistant to me. Come on, y'all. Uh, listen, and here it is. God could have rescued Jonah in any number of ways. Uh, he chose this specific way because of the effect it would have on Jonah's heart. Come on, y'all. Uh, uh, listen, here's what I see. God does everything with a purpose. That's what I want y'all to share with you tonight. God does everything uh, with a purpose. Everything God does, uh, it's with a purpose. Uh, and I'm grateful and you ought to be grateful and you ought to shout and you ought to say amen and you ought to clap your hands. Uh, why? Because even when you didn't do what God wanted you to do, uh, God did not give up on you. Come on. Uh, and that is the lesson of Jonah. Come on. Uh, because what he could have done was uh, uh, said, Jonah, forget about it. I'm done with you. Uh, but aren't you grateful tonight, child of God, that for this little Bible study, I don't want to preach it, but for this little Bible study that you can be reminded uh, that God has an ultimate plan for your life, uh, that even in your resistance, uh, it does not de uh, uh, deny the fact uh, that God has not given up on you. Uh, and here it is tonight. Uh, God could have done this in many different ways. God could have uh, changed the heart of Jonah in many different ways, but he chose this uh, because he knew that this would get directly uh, at Jonah's heart. So what am I saying? I'm saying to you tonight that the problem with Jonah was not just an issue of rebellion. Come here, come on. The, the, the problem with Jonah was not just an issue of rebellion. 
the problem with Jonah was really an issue of the heart. <laughs> Good God. I like that, y'all. Come on, y'all. Uh, come on in here, somebody. I, am I here by myself? Come on. The problem with Jonah was not that it was an issue of just rebellion and resistance. It was an issue of the heart, child of God. Uh, this was an issue of the heart. Come on, y'all. Uh, rebellion starts in the heart. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, rebellion starts in the heart. Uh, see, what it is in your heart makes you, what is it in your heart? Uh, Jonah, come here, come here, Jonah and Jonah at, Jonah uh, uh, What is it in your heart to make you think that you can run from God or be contrary to God? Uh, see, come on, y'all, uh, because here's the, here's the key. Uh, and this is not just works with being rebellious, but this works in every facet of your life. Uh, when you get your heart right, oh God, uh, everything changes. Come on, y'all. Uh, when you get your heart right, uh, everything starts to change. Come on, y'all, hit share one more time. Uh, when you get your heart right, uh, everything starts to change. And that was what was going on with Jonah tonight. And while we are looking at Jonah, and while we're listening to Jonah, you begin to realize, guess what? His conversation even changes. His tone begins to change. Why, y'all? Because now, what do they usually say? He's having a change of heart. Uh, that's what they say. And there comes moments, child of God, uh, that not only in your relationship to God, come on, uh, but even your relationship to each other, that you've got to have a change of heart. Uh, in other words, uh, not only with your rebellion, but with your unforgiveness, uh, with your attitude, uh, come on, y'all, uh, with your habits, uh, that if you want to break a cycle of anything, you have to change your heart. Come on, y'all. Come on. Is there anybody with me tonight? That if you want to change the cycle of anything, you got to change it. See, if your heart don't change, nothing. Come on. So here, so let me see if I can do it this way. See if I can do it this way. Here we are in a nation full of unrest. Come on. In a nation full of unrest, right? We're in a nation full of unrest. They're taking down statues, right? Taking down statues, taking down Confederate flags. Corporations are making statements and making some policy changes as it relates to race relations. And we are seeing a, a number of things, come on, across the board, right? But here's what I want to say to you. They can take down all the statues they want. They can take down all the flags they want. They can make as many statements if they want. If the heart of folk who hate does not change, nothing changes. All you've done was remove some symbols, but this America has a problem with its heart. Come on, y'all. The issue with our nation, a nation that has been rebellious uh, as it relates to race relation, uh, is an issue of the heart. Uh, and if we don't get more folk, uh, uh, more, and particularly our white brothers and sisters who are hating to have a change of heart, nothing's going to change. Uh, you, can you can take down as many, uh, uh, many monuments as you want. You can take down as many flags as you want. Uh, you can write as many letters as you want. You can march as much as you want. This is an issue of the heart. And the problem is that we've got a rebellious nation where Jeremiah Wright says, and your chickens are coming home to roost. Nobody wants to talk about that. And that's why they ought to give Kaepernick his job back. Why? Because he was telling them this three years ago, your chickens are coming home to roost. And here's what I want to share with you. If your heart don't change, you can come to church all you want to. You can say you got Holy Ghost all you want to. But if your heart does not change, nothing else will change for you, child of God. And here we are. The reason that Jonah did not go, it was an issue of his heart, y'all. Listen, because when, you got, when you've given your life and your heart to God, then you 
must understand that you cannot run from God. Come on, y'all. You cannot run from God. So now that we're in this second chapter here of Jonah, you must understand uh, we start seeing a change of heart. Why? Because now what is he doing? Uh, he's crying out unto the Lord. Uh, come on, y'all. Uh, that's what he's doing. Uh, how many times have we found ourselves in a bad situation uh, and then realize that we need God like never before? Come on. Now, listen, here, here, here's Jonah. Here's Jonah. Can you hear him now? I can hear him now. God, if you just get me out of here. Oh, God, I, I won't do this. Come on, y'all. I won't do this no more. Y'all know we've, we've, we've all been there. We, we've all been there before, right? Uh, but here's what I want to share with you tonight, uh, uh, that in this moment, uh, he's having a change of heart heart, y'all. Uh, and sometimes, here it is, uh, God has to put you in a place uh, for you to see uh, what we refuse to see before. Come on, uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, see, sometimes God uh, has to put you in a place now uh, where you see uh, what you fail to see and what you refuse, oh my God, uh, what you refuse to see the first time. Come on, y'all. Uh, and a large portion of this chapter of Jonah is starting to come, uh, he is starting to come to his sin. And sometimes when things get bad, y'all, uh, guess what? They're really just getting better. Uh, see, just because you see things as getting bad, uh, sometimes they're really just getting better. And every now and then, child of God, uh, God's got to put you in a place, y'all. Uh, come on, uh, where you see what God was trying to get you to see in the first place, uh, but you failed to see it. Come on, y'all. Uh, see, sometimes God, well, come on, is there anybody else? Yeah, I see some of the same ones of y'all. Y'all talk back to me. Uh, see, sometimes uh, God has to put you in a place, come on, sometime, uh, for you to see. Matter of fact, God's got to make you uncomfortable. Come on, y'all. Uh, and sometimes the reason that you are uncomfortable uh, is because God, God is trying to get you to see something, child of God, uh, that you ain't never seen before or that you refuse to see. Come on in here. Uh, and that's what happened to Jonah. Jonah is in the belly of a whale uh, because he refused to see uh, what God wanted him to see or refused to do uh, what God wanted him to do. And so now he's in a bad situation, uh, but the situation is going to get better. Come on, y'all, uh, because now what happens? Uh, he has a change of heart. Uh, and every now and then, child of God. Uh, God's got to put you through the process. Uh, and there's some lessons here tonight uh, that I want you to know that Jonah, there's just a few, a few lessons that we feel here tonight uh, that Jonah teaches us, if you would, uh, uh, on tonight. As we, as we begin to look here uh, at this, uh, there's a few lessons uh, uh, that Jonah teaches us on tonight. Here, here it is. Uh, one, that God loves us, that God's love for us does not stop even in moments when we have rebelled. Jesus have mercy. Come on, y'all. Uh, ain't nobody listening to me. Come on. See, God's love for you does not stop just because you rebelled. Come on. See, God's love don't stop just because you rebel. Come on, y'all. Uh, uh, and aren't you glad it's no different than when your when your parents had to to spank you, right? Uh, in those days when when you know when it was all right to spank, but it didn't mean they didn't love you. It just means that you had to go through the consequence at that time, right? Number two, it also shows um, it also shows the consequences does not move. See, see, in other words, and I, I wrote that wrong, but here it is. Just because you had a change of heart doesn't mean that you ain't got to deal with the consequence. Is there anybody here with me tonight? Come on, y'all. Just, just, just because, um, just because, just because, just because you, 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 you decide you want change in some things now because life is hard for you. Come on. Guess what? It don't mean that you ain't got to deal with the consequence. See, your rebellion does not exempt you from your assignment. Come on here, somebody. Come on, it just got to be somebody here tonight. Come on. Your, your, your rebellion does not exempt you from your assignment. That's what I want to share with you tonight. Your, your rebellion does not exempt you from your assignment. Here it is. Let's see if I can go here tonight. See, Jonah cried out to the Lord. Got it? He, he cried out to the Lord uh, from the belly of a great fish. He acknowledged his desperate condition 
and his needy state and his desire to return again to the Lord. He knew that the Lord alone would save him. The Lord proved his sovereignty in having the fish, come on, vomit Jonah onto dry land. Isn't that something? Come on, y'all. Uh, that, 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 that the fish uh, uh, vomited Jonah on dry land, but it did not. Here it is. Come on, let's get here. It did not vomit Jonah on dry land until Jonah learned the lesson that God was trying to teach him. Come on. Now, see, just because you have a change of heart, it mean you ain't got to go through the consequence. And it don't mean that you won't be delivered, but you ain't going to be delivered until you learn your lesson. Come on, somebody. See, your deliverance don't come. See, you can't get out of that which has swallowed you until you learn the lesson of why you've been swallowed in the first place. Come on, somebody. And so that's the lesson here. He knew what the Lord alone, that the Lord alone has saved him. And the Lord proved that he was sovereign. The Lord proved that he was sovereign because see, God's going to get the last say-so no matter what. Come on, somebody. God's going to get the last say-so no matter what. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. I'm, I promise you, I'm almost done. God's going to get the last say so no matter what. Here it is. Never forget this. Here's what I want to share with you tonight. Never forget. Nowhere is outside the Lord's presence. And he's always hears the prayers of his people, of his children. Now, now what about what do I mean when I say that? I just want to let's let's go back. Let's go back there. What do you what do I mean, child of God, when I tell you uh, nowhere? I said and I and I wrote that right. Nowhere is outside of the Lord's presence. In other words, God is everywhere. Come on, he's everywhere. Nowhere you can go is outside of the Lord's presence. And no situation you're in, uh, are you in a place where God can't hear you? So guess what? God is even in, his presence is even inside the belly of a great fist. And God can hear you, child of God, when you stop praying. I preached this one time in strange places. God can hear you when you pray. There is nowhere you can be in the jail, in the hospital, in the bathroom, in your house, at your desk, in your car, uh, uh, in the dark, in the light, on the mountaintop, in the valley, wherever you are. God hears you when you pray. And what did Jonah do? Jonah started praying and praising and coming to the realization of what had happened and who God was. That's what Jonah did. Jonah started to begin to understand exactly who God was. I'm almost done. Here it is, y'all. Here it is. Here's the last slide. The last slide. Here's the last slide. Here's what I want to tell you tonight, and I'm done. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Come on, somebody. That's what I want to tell you. The, the, the safest place, Jesus, have mercy, in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Is there anybody that believes that tonight? Come on, y'all. You've got to learn your lesson. Yes, Barbara. And you must understand that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. You always want to stay, child of God, in the will of God. Come on. That's the safest place. Come on. You always want to stay in the will of our God. My, 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 my. Listen, child of God, I'm done tonight. I want to first of all say to you, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming and hanging out with us tonight. Um, I want to thank you so much for just hanging out with us tonight um, for this little Bible study lesson on tonight. Uh, we had started with some technical difficulties, uh, but I want to thank you so much for just uh, hanging out with us on tonight. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I do want to say we're praying for each and every one of you, and I hope that uh, there has been something that you've learned in this lesson tonight, or I hope there's something that you remember, child of God, uh, certainly in this lesson uh, for, for tonight. Uh, uh, don't be rebellious. When you hear God's voice, do what God has called you to do. And all of us get mo to moments, child of God, where we are, where we have, where we have rebelled. I want to say to all of you, we want to say thank you so much for your, your support. 
uh, on Sunday mornings and on Bible study and with your finances. We want to say thank you. And can I ask you that if you have not given of your tithes and your offers, make sure if you didn't do it on Sunday, you can do it anytime during the week. Uh, please make sure that you do that. Also want to say thank you uh, for staying abreast of all the things that have been taking place in our community. Want to thank God for our food pantry that's been working and working diligently and feeding. I want to thank God for our trustees who have been working certainly in our background and, and to all of you who've been doing certainly the work of ministry. We want to say thank God for each and every one of you. And then we want to thank you for those of you who've been um, on our Sunday school Zoom. There's a lot of you uh, who've been Zooming. I call it our Zooming and Booming Sunday school. Thank God for those of you who've been um, in our uh, Sunday school. And then I want to thank God for our media ministry and uh, our Brother Terrell and all those who've been working uh, so diligently to make sure that we can bring this straight to you uh, each and every week. God is a mighty good God, and we are so grateful to all of our friends who are on. Can I say thank y'all for just joining in with us? Some of y'all are just regulars with us, and I want to say thank you. Certainly, I thank God for all of my Virginia uh, family and friends, and then we've got others, many of you who've been connected to the Union Church for a long time, others who are family and friends of members, uh, certainly of our church. We just want to say thank God for you, and then I just want to say we celebrate all of our graduates, all of our graduates, we want to celebrate all of them uh, and say congratulations to all of you who are doing great things. I miss seeing you, uh, but I want y'all to be safe. Amen. Many of you may have seen my interview um, online and I said uh, we might open when we at 75% capacity, but guess what? Uh, I'm just going to open when uh, when I think it's the right time to open. Amen. And so we we give God praise and praise and honor and glory for all the things that the Lord has allowed us to do. Certainly in this season, we are praying for our sick and shut in. So let's keep them all lifted up in prayer. So we thank God for you. We thank God for your presence tonight. We pray that you have a wonderful rest of your night. Make sure you do what I'm going to do. I'm getting ready to get me some rest. Amen. I'm about to get me some rest. Thank y'all for hanging out. Uh, certainly we thank God for you. Uh, hanging out with us on tonight. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you. May God continue to shine his face upon each and every one. And remember, the safest place in the world is in the will of God. And I want to say, have a great night. And certainly we will see you next Sunday on Sunday coming. Amen. God bless y'all. Have a great night, everybody.